Hi, this is continuation for Power Electrons Lectures, and today we are going to talk about power diodes. I think you have some background about diodes from electronics modules, and you cover them in general and how they do and how they function. But today we are going to specify the talk uh, uh, about the power diodes and how they are different from the signal diodes and what they bring to us to be uh, visible and suitable for power electronic circuits. So as a start, what is the diode? The diode is a component which passes the current in one direction. It has two terminals, which are the anode and the cathode, and they have some IV curve characteristics. So the, the current goes usually from the anode to cathode, and it goes from anode to cathode if the voltage at the anode is more than the voltage at the cathode, and this is the condition for switching it on. And we call that condition is a forward bias operation. And that forward bias operation makes the diode it drops some volt while it's in the forward bias. So it passes the current from anode to cathode, but also it drops some voltage, and that voltage is called the forward voltage. And this is the IV curve, the usual IV curve for uh, for the diode, even if it's signal or power diode. But also it has another region, which is the reverse bias. That reverse bias um, applies when the uh, voltage of the anode is less than the voltage of the cathode. And at that time, the current has no chance to go backward, okay? The IV curve uh, has this shape, okay? Where we have very tiny current can go through the diode in the reverse bias operation. And that reverse current is called the reverse current or leakage current. And here is the name for that, okay? But it's very tiny for some days and a little bit larger and concerning for other days. And we will know about these details maybe very soon. We have here a point which is the break, uh, breakdown voltage where we break the, uh, the diode and it will not work anymore, okay? We have some days like Zener days which will not cover in power entrance module. Uh, which uh, which has smaller breakdown voltage and can work for regulation and uh, the, the operation for that is the breakdown voltage, okay? So we will ignore the Zener diode uh, for this talk. And I think you are familiar with this IV curve before and we want to know what is the difference between signal diodes and power diodes. The uh, signal diodes, this is what we covered maybe in electronics modules and some of them, uh, we have used them for also rectification but still in a very, uh, uh, maybe, uh, limited or constrained applications. So the signal diode is just a p-n junction, uh, and the b-type and n-type are a result of doping the semiconductor, and usually the semiconductor is a silicon one. So the combination of the p-type and n-type just form for me the diode. And that diode that we used to use sometimes has low current capability, and low blocking voltage capability and also produce or uh, can work on low powered circuits. I mean by low current, it doesn't have the capability to uh, pass uh, amps and kilo amps uh, uh, current and low uh, blocking voltage. That means, yeah, it can handle up to 100, 200 uh, voltage. It can block that, but it doesn't block 1000 or 2000 or 5000 uh, volt. And for low power, it can, deal with some small power in microwatt and milliwatt and few of them in watt but it's not in a kilowatt for example but the power diode here has different structure and brings to us different uh, properties and features maybe extended one and the new ones so we have here p type but we have here two n type uh, regions the first one is n negative the second one is n positive and maybe what we mean by n positive and n negative N negative means lightly doped, and N positive means heavily doped. Heavily doped is like this one, okay? So P and junction they are heavily doped, but they put here a third region with an, a lightly doped semiconductor, okay? That means it doesn't have lots of charges, and yeah, it might increase the depletion region and the distance, and that bring to us maybe higher blocking voltage, and that's why the power diode can handle maybe higher uh, higher voltage. So it they produce for us these diodes and adapt and manipulate the structure and other things to handle higher currents and higher blocking voltages and also higher power. And this is just like an, an, another structure of the uh, power diode. We have here P positive, 
But here we have two regions of negative and negative and, and positive. Okay, so the, the, the IV curve for the signal um, uh, diode and power diode will look like this. We have that extra region here, yet it blocks higher voltage, but also it brings some other things like higher forward voltage drop. So we used to have like 0.7 or 0.5 voltage drop across the signal diode if it's from silicon. But for power diode, no, you are looking for one voltage and higher from one voltage to two voltage voltage drop okay the, and that's why the, the curve here is a little bit extended because the forward voltage here is higher than the signal but also the breaking voltage is higher okay so we have the power diode from there to there okay but the signal diode has a lower breaking voltage and can block just lower voltages okay we have also higher resistance in forward bias if we bring that one there it will sometimes introduce for us a little bit of resistance. Some data sheets, they specify the value of that resistance to be considered in power dissipation calculation, but some uh, data sheets, they just ignore it because it's very small. Because we have the P-type and N-type, okay, and there is another material between them, okay, and that material is not very highly doped. That means it's very close to the pure silicon or pure semiconductor. That's why they sometimes they call it PIN, P-type and N-type, but the middle one is the intrinsic, okay, or the pure semiconductor. And this is another name sometimes they call the power diodes by PIN. And yes, the power diode has brought for us higher ratings, but also it brought for us something else, which is called the reverse recovery time. Now, in forward bias, we are expecting the voltage of the anode is more than the voltage of the cathode, and the current goes from anode to cathode. And in the reverse bias, the voltage of the anode is less than the voltage of the cathode, and the voltage should be blocked instantaneously like this. Okay, so I have here the current in the forward bias, okay, ID, because the voltage here, the anode more than the cathode, but if it's reverse bias now, I imagine that the, the current will go from very high value, for example, to zero like this, okay? But this is not the practical situation. So while the current goes from the anode to the cathode, it also leaves some charges here in the junction. That junction is like a space and you are filling it with the charges and that helps the conductivity of the diode. But now when you reverse bias the diode, these charges have to be removed to reduce the conductivity of the diode and also to make it able to block that current and that voltage. That time that ta that, that's taken to remove these charges is called the reverse recovery time. And at that time, the current has the ability to pass it from the cathode to the anode because still these charges hasn't been removed and you are okay you have the ability for the current to go from the cathode to anode and this process will deplete and remove that charges and then will be able to block it so the current will look like this practically that current will pass now to zero and then will continue reversing from cathode to anode for a small short time okay and then we'll go back to zero again okay so this reverse current is the result of these charges that needs to be removed okay and the time taken is called the uh, the, the reverse recovery time this is another accurate uh, figure in the forward bias we have full current in the forward bias and there's forward voltage here and there is some power dissipation but in, when you switch it off, that means the voltage of the anode now is less, the current tends to go to zero. But it doesn't just go to zero and, and stop there. No, it continues to the, to the negative part here and then goes to zero. That time from the zero here to 25% of that peak is called the reverse recovery time. And it has two portions, the uh, TA and TB. TA is the time from zero to the peak and from peak to the 25% of the peak is called TB, okay? And at that time also we have some small dissipation here, which is not a very small in some situation and very high frequency. If the frequency is 50 Hz, 60 Hz, no problem. Uh, these are very small and because they are not frequent, so they can be ignored. But in frequencies more than one kilohertz, 
this might be significant and should be considered by a designer. So this region now, we call it the conduction losses here, okay? And that region here is called the switching losses. Okay, so what's the reverse recovery time? It is the time between the instant forward diode current becomes zero, which is this point, okay? And the instant reverse recovery current, which is, this one is the reverse recovery current, decays to 25% of its maximum, okay? So this is called now, the, this is the de definition of the reverse recovery time, and it equals Ta plus Tb, okay? We have some charges, this shaded piece here, okay? It, it, it represents charges that should be removed, okay? I mentioned that this junction is full of charges in the forward bias, and when you reverse it, it will allow the uh, diode to uh, to conduct the current in the reverse uh, direction because of these charges. How much charges they are there uh, in the junction? They are QRR, uh, the charges in the reverse recovery, and this shaded piece here represents that charges. So it is the amount of charges carries that flows across the diode in the reverse direction due to change over from forward the conduction to reverse blocking. Uh, condition and in practice the designer should take this into consideration when they design uh, a high frequency application or high frequency circuit and they should calculate or get the reverse recovery time and also QRR from the data sheet and consider that in the calculation and during the reverse recovery time this is very important note and sometimes you take that note and understand many circuits during the reverse recovery time, which is this time here, okay, the uh, diode behaves effectively as a short circuit. So now we turn it on, the current comes from, from the anode to the cathode, and once you turn it off, exactly, um, before it turns off completely, so the diode will be like a short circuit during this uh, period. Short circuit means it can conduct the current in any direction, okay? So, and is not able or capable of a blocking reverse voltage, allowing reverse current flow, and then suddenly disrupting the current. So, the parameter TRR is very important for switching application. And I think you remember from uh, one of the last, uh, last lectures, I have uh, talked about this figure and also talking about this figure. We mentioned that this is the turn on waveform for the current and voltage for the, for the transistor. Okay? So, the transistor current, okay, it's zero here, and when I turn it on, it goes to 50 ampere. But during that transition, we have a little bit of a spike, and we mentioned that spike is because of reverse recovery. We want now to explain that more now, because we know what is the reverse recovery time, okay? So now the current uh, is going through that transistor in the turn on, but when you turn on the transistor, it doesn't mean we are turning on the diode. No, we are turning off the diode. Okay, so this scenario here it talks about turning on the transistor and also turning off the diode. Okay, and we mentioned when we turn off the diode, we are uh, we should pass it through the, 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 the recovery time. Okay, reverse recovery time, and during the reverse recovery time the diode behaves like a short circuit. That means that current that should go through the transistor, now while, while we are turning on that transistor, that one behaves like a short circuit. And short circuit means the current goes from, uh, from the V source here to the diode in the reverse direction during the reverse uh, recovery time, and then goes to the uh, to the transistor and that's why here we have a spike of the current because the current going through the transistor the diode okay and then after completely switch off the diode it just go through the the inductor okay and that's why we have the reverse recovery that peak can be completely eliminated or reduced by selecting a proper diode and if you're gonna throw some references, you will find something called softness factor. Softness factor is just the ratio between the time Tb and the time T Ta, okay? And if they are very close to each other, so it's called, this diode is classified as soft recovery diode. And if the Tb, this one, 
here in this case is very very short okay that means compared with ta that means the uh, soft uh, softness factor is very low that means it's fast recovery diode and i will stop here for this part of the lecture and will continue talking the types of diodes in the coming video thank you very much